So if we're if we were to continue with sublevels of the principal energy level, you have S, P, D, and F, and these are broken down into orbitals, two electrons being able to fit in each. So the S sublevel has one orbital, the P has three, D has five, and F has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in terms of the filling of that orbital, um, there is going to be the first electron, which is spin up. And then in the S, the second electron is going to be spin down. And for the Ds, the way, uh, actually for the Ps, sorry, uh, these are, the electrons are going to fill them up this way. Uh, there's going to be one here. And then before it goes into the same orbital, it's going to see if there's some other empty orbitals. So the first three electrons of the P sublevel are going to first have all of your spin ups located uh, in three different orbitals. Before it goes back to fill uh, with a spin down. And that's called Hunt's rule. And it's comparable to the way um, people might fill a, uh, a bus or, or a subway car. Um, it, it, when you walk in, you're not going to sit uh, down right next to somebody if there are other seats available. You're most likely going to uh, sit in an empty uh, two seater and um, along with, uh, you know, uh, uh, other people as they come into the bus. And electrons kind of behave the same way. They're going to first fill the uh, empty orbitals first with one spin up before they go back to that first orbital to um, fill it with a spin down. So in other words, the Ds, let's say if you had five electrons, those five are going to be spread out first to spin ups this way. Although if you had, let's say, eight electrons in the d orbital, you would fill your first five up this way and then go back. And then the remaining three would be spin down. And then if you had, let's say, uh, all 10 electrons filling up the d, it'd be filling like that. So again, according to Hunt's rule, uh, each orbital is going to be filled with a spin up before it goes back to um, a spin down. And that's how they kind of uh, spread out. So if we take that and uh, then talk about quantum numbers, our first quantum number is uh, N and that's our energy level. And the energy level could be one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. And L is gonna be the next one, and that's gonna describe our sublevel. And those numbers are going to be zero, one, two, three. And that's going to match either S, P, D, or F, our orbitals. And next one's going to be M, L. And this is going to describe the specific orbital. And that number is going to be negative L to positive L. So in other words, let's say uh, we're talking about um, sublevel P. Well, that means that uh, our L is 1. So our ML is going to be either negative 1, 0, 
or positive 1. Which makes sense because we know that the p has three orbitals, so this would be the negative 1, the 0, and the positive 1. If we were talking about the quantum number ml for a d, well, it would be negative 2 to positive 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. So it's really just another way to uh, state the location of a specific electron. And uh, when you know the location of it, it's going to tell you how much energy it has. So that's why we have these quantum numbers. The last one, or the fourth quantum number, is the spin. And that's either going to be spin up or spin down. Plus a half or a minus a half. And again, that refers to the placement of a specific electron, whether it has, a, uh, whether you're talking about a spin up like this guy here, or a spin down like that guy there. So, so let let's try a few examples. We want uh, an answer for the following question: What is the Four quantum numbers, actually it should be R, right? What are the four quantum numbers of the last electron in, uh, let's say, oxygen? Well, <clears throat> For that, we need to look uh, back at the periodic table, and we see that uh, oxygen, the first uh, quantum number, is going to be 2. It's in period 2, energy level 2. So, n equals 2. Next, we need the L. So is that last electron in an S, P, D, or F orbital? Let's see. Well, it looks like it's in a P because according to the electron configuration, this is actually uh, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4. Okay. So that last electron is going to be in a P. So the second quantum number is 1. For the third quantum number, we need to determine, well, which, which P is the last one in? Well, let's see. If it's 2P4, and we know that the four electrons need to be filled like this, then the ML quantum number has to be negative 1, 0, positive 1. It's got to be negative 1. And finally, your spin on that last electron is going to be spin down, negative 1 half. So your uh, quantum numbers of the last electron in oxygen is going to be 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1 half. All right. Let's try another one. So if you had a question like, what are the quantum numbers? of the last electron of silicon. Well, let's take a look at silicon. Silicon is in the third uh, principal energy level, so the first quantum number is three. And uh, which, which sub-level is it in, S, P, D, or F? See. Silicon electron configuration is going to be 3s1, 3s2, uh, 3p1, 3p2. 
So that means that this is going to be a P or a 1. And ML is going to be in the ML will be in the 2P2 and in that P since it's 2P2 those two electrons are going to be filled this way so you have negative one zero one and that quantum number is going to be zero and of course since it's spin up it's going to be plus one half so the quantum number for silicon or the last electron of silicon is three whoops three one zero plus one half All right. So let's try something like um, what are the quantum numbers of the last electron? in tungsten. Okay, first one is in. Let's look at tungsten. <clears throat> it's in um, one, two, three, four, five, six. But now, remember, it's in the D uh, block, so that's actually going to be five for its principal quantum number. So it's five. And uh, it's in the D, so the second quantum number is going to be 2. That electron is located in which orbital of the D? Let's see. We know that D has 5. And it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's... 5d4 1 2 3 4 so if it's in this guy here we know that these no quantum numbers are now arranged like this the negative l to the positive l fellows too it's got to be negative 2 negative 1 0 1 and 2 so since the last electron is located in this orbital here, that quantum number is 1. And then it's a spin up, right? So it's plus 1 half. So the quantum numbers for tungsten are 5, 2, 1, plus 1 half. 